people doing proton therapy, if you've heard of it before, and would that be something you'd want to hear about before we start the treatment, or would you, are you kind of comfortable kind of proceeding with a photon-based approach? Tell me a little bit about what you think. I want to do what's best for him. Well, I think both treatments are equivalent, basically. I think in these situations, oftentimes there's either a physician or a patient family bias, one way or the other. And so I think if you don't have a strong preference to say, you know, I've read a lot about it, or I really would personally want to relocate, we can help you to do that. Um, but I think that is it necessary or required to do that for any on benefit oncologically? I don't think that that's true. So it's really just going to be driven by you guys if you really wanted to meet with or do that. We can do that. But I don't know necessarily that it would give you a different or better outcome. And we don't have any good proof of that with this type of tumor. Does that make sense? Okay. There's no good data that supports that proton therapy is definitely better here. Um, we don't know that to be the case. So I don't think it's worth um, the other necessarily like downsides that can happen to you know, being away from friends, being away from family, you know, relocating the cost of that. I think that that's a lot of difficult things to do for something that may or may not be better. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm not familiar with that at all. I Proton mean, therapy? Right. I, so I would be a poor one to give my opinion. Um, but I'm like, Sherry, whatever's best for him, and I think we can depend on your opinion. Yeah. I personally think that proton therapy here is likely similar in terms of the ability to control tumor. There's positive and negatives with the proton therapy. I think we're going to be treating more of the area that the tumor is sitting in to a high dose, potentially having implications on toxicity being slightly worse, but they are likely going to be similar because we have to put that high dose there with both treatments. So we'll talk a little bit about what those toxicities are. Because just because we have to treat the tumor means that there's going to be some risk to bones of the face, his eye, his his the area that supports tears. All of those areas can potentially be harmed or damaged, um, and we have to talk about that. And that's true for both therapies. So that doesn't really change. The main change between proton and photon treatment is really the potential for secondary injury to the other parts of the uninvolved brain and head. Um, that's low risk for both, but likely slightly better with proton therapy. Now, the, the reason why I bring up you know the other outside things that are also important in terms of keeping family together and cost and transportation and housing is sometimes if we don't have good evidence that one is better than the other, I don't want to force somebody into a situation that you get the same outcome, but we cause a lot of disruption in your life. Does that make sense? And so I don't know necessarily that in this situation, proton therapy has such a significant benefit that it's worth all the things that come along with it, like relocation and, and being away from friends and family. Does that make sense? Yes. Does that kind of help a little bit? But basically, proton therapy is like what we use here, which is photon-based, light-based. The main thing that is different is because it's a particle, it doesn't travel... Uh, all the way through the body, it stops at a certain distance. So we take advantage of that from a toxicity perspective where we can actually play around with the, that there's no dose down here. Does that make sense? But the photon treatment has also some advantages compared to proton therapy and some disadvantages. So there's no perfect treatment, um, but I do think that photon therapy is likely... Uh, is very likely to help and control the tumor um, and has some risk for late toxicity similar to what proton will do. The main thing that is different is the secondary risk to uninvolved tissue. Does that make sense? Yeah. What do you think, Jason? I know it's a lot to go over, but what do you think, Jason? I don't really know what anything what you said. That's okay. Today is the first day of, a, of hopefully as many questions as you need, some education, so that way we help you understand what you're going through, but also try to get you a good outcome so that you feel better. Okay, that's kind of the key. Because the the area that we're going after 
and this is kind of, if you want to look at it, you can. If you don't, it's up to you. You have sort of this large tumor here, which is kind of deep to your cheek. So there's tumor under the eye, deep within your face, and it's taking up the majority of that left face. So it's kind of like your like behind your entire sinus here, in and intermixed amongst all the muscles of your face. Okay, it goes rather low down, almost into like where your palate is, and I don't know if you could feel like some pressure back there. Do you feel anything in your upper palate as you swallow, like in your mouth? Mouth. Mouth. If you swallow or you move your tongue around, do you feel any sensations? Not really, because it looks like there's some distortion here, which is like near the tonsil. And then we, um, as we go higher, these sort of muscles of the uh, deep skull base are involved. All of this is involved. And then as we go higher, this is just a measurement I put on. You can see it's a little over six centimeters in this area. So that's a few inches um, inside the face there. And then as we go higher, there's this is the component that's pushing the eye forward. Um, this is tumor within the orbit, and when we went over with multiple different radiologists, it's hard to make out the actual lacrimal gland, which is this. That's what produces tears. It is somewhere intermixed inside the tumor, or the tumor's invaded it or done something. Um, and so the tumor is all inside this sort of left um, outside muscle, as well as the muscle at the top of the eye. That's why the eye is pushed down and in, because up above and to the side is where tumor has eroded through the bone. There's also tumor out on the outside here, closer to the skin above the ear. That's this temporalis component. That is also something that we'll try to shrink and go after as well. There's tumor inside deep in the brain. This is what majority was removed by the surgeon, but you have tumor here, which there's nerves that help with um, coordinating vision, uh, moving vision, your eyes around, as well as sensation in your face. There's tumor in the cavernous sinus, which is the double vision nerves. And then the uh, Meckel's cave here, which is what can give you sometimes numbness. And so we're gonna go after all the tumor in that area. You also have tumor near the pituitary gland. Some of it actually crosses over to the other side. So one of the main goals that we're gonna have is let's try our best to make certain that this tumor doesn't start to go to the good eye, um, especially trying to preserve the good eye vision. I think that if we do no treatment, I think we're gonna lose the vision to the eye because it will hurt the eye. It'll eventually compress or injure the actual eye and eventually the nerve to the eye. So by causing so much proptosis, we're injuring and the blood flow and all the things to the nerve and the eye are impacted. So it, we know that we have to do something. Otherwise, the eye will get impacted, okay? Has Radi it always been this big? It's definitely gotten bigger, especially since the surgery. It looks like it's gotten about a centimeter bigger. And so when we looked at it since last year... How much did they take out of this, during the surgery? Because I thought what I was told was they took out all of it, but the the tumor that was deep in the brain that they couldn't get out. They did take out a, a, a large amount. So the, we have sort of a couple of scans that we can kind of show you for comparison. They took out a large component that was inside the brain. This is actually a CAT scan, so it's different than the other two. Okay. The This white here is actually the tumor. They took out essentially all the tumor here that was inside the um, actual brain itself. So this stuff here, the brain component. And so that had been cleared out. Okay. And so this scan right after surgery, it looks almost like the majority of this is gone. They took out the this large area here. There was a very small piece left behind here. So that was like seven to 10 millimeters. Okay. Small amount left inside the orbit. And then a little bit here that's deep that they can't really get out. Yeah. Okay. Um, they also didn't uh, remove all of the part that was below. So there's some tumor, a little bit of tumor down here in the muscles. Okay. But if we go back and then compare to what it looks like about a year later after the surgery, that those components have gotten quite a bit bigger. So this tumor here has about uh, doubled in size and went from maybe 10 millimeters to 20. 
Um, so here to here, and then you can see, I think this shows